Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where it is apparently time to go visit the moon. We need to establish an orbit around the moon with an apoapsis less than 2400 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 60 kilometers. Okay, so let's head over to the VAB and to that end we can absolutely work on that. So, let's open up our existing quote-unquote heavy lift rocket that I accidentally overwrote. Let's load this guy up, and we are going to immediately make a few changes here. This is not the same one. Okay, it must have been this one. Yes, it is this one. Cool. So, first things first, we are going to detach this engine. We need to put in the Terrier engine. I'm going to extend this tank a little bit here. I'm going to add in an FL200. So, that's going to be something along the lines of that. Then we're going to attach this here. I think this should be a pair of FL-800s. And I want to... No, this needs to be closed. We need to grab this off, this off. Hang on. We've got a decoupler here. Where did I ditch the decoupler? That is here. Okay. Decoupler goes there. These come off. These are currently 400s. Or a 400 and a 200. We're going to put in a pair of 800s here. So this is going to be fairly low thrust to weight at this point, right? And I'm going to just ditch these wings. I don't want to carry the weight. So that'll be fine. This is our only science module at this time. That seems A-OK. -okay. So for right now, we need to not have these decouplers be at the same time. We're going to need it to be more along the lines of this. There we go. So that's more like it. This is going to be a vacuum stage. So this is going to be vacuum 1,000, no, 2,121 meters per second. That's fine. This stage is going to be atmosphere. This, of course, is low thrust to weight right now, 1.15. That's why it needs to be heavy lift. So we are going to absolutely strap on a couple of side boosters here. Now, I might just go for SRBs here. And I think that's probably for the best, since we don't have any ability to do any fuel flow. So that would be for, for the best, I think. So that would mean that we're going to put on, like, a pair of thumpers. Something like that. And we're going to need to move these down, of course. So we're going to grab this guy, move you right on down. Can we go further? Nope. We're going to need to grab this guy. Right about there. Okay, so that is 1.91 thrust to weight. Technically, we don't need to fire this engine simultaneously, and I don't think we will. So I'm going to remove that. We're going to put this in here. This is currently set for vacuum. I'm going to have it be set for atmosphere, and that's going to propel us quite a long ways up, so then we'll start burning this significantly higher. We are going to want to have nose cones on here. About like that. Then I'm going to strut these together from here to about here. That looks good. And then down below from here to about here. So something along the lines of this. 1.9 thrust to weight is going to push us through a fair amount of the lower atmosphere, but this is by no means going to get us orbital before this detachment happens. So beyond that, is there anything else that we feel like we need here? Honestly, I don't think so. And can we, like, delete one of these workspaces? I'm going to overwrite this one. But what happens? Can we... Now this is apparently the only workspace? Okay, sure. Whatever. Workspaces are weird. There's no doubt about that. Let's launch this and see how that initial stage performs. This is only 1.14 thrust to weight in atmosphere. I'm wondering what it would be like in vacuum, 1.31. So it'll be a little higher than that, but this stage is going to be a little underwhelming in its performance. No doubt about it, it's barely going to be beating out gravity. So we're hoping that we get a far enough distance out of these SRBs. 42 seconds of burn time at 1.9 thrust to weight should be pretty decent. Actually, it's 1.58. That was in vacuum mode. Okay, so that's going to be a little less far, but that should still be reasonably good. So let's save this again and put it out on the pad, and let's see how this goes. We are aiming... Whoa, that was quite an angle. We are aiming for orbit of the moon at this point, and this should be relatively stable. No problem whatsoever there. I believe that this way is east, if I recall correctly, so we may have to do a rotation. That's reasonably fine. Our staging should be good. 
So I think we're ready to lift this off. We apparently have a research that we can do here. Sure. And off we go. Those SRBs definitely giving us some speed here. Let's rotate this very slowly on around. So 90 degrees is considered down here. And we'll just put it right about there or so. Perfect. Keeping an eye on those SRBs, this is not going to take us all that far. Okay, let's start getting some amount of horizontal speed out of them. I'm concerned about this, though. We might be being too greedy here. Okay, so let's put this at about a 45 degree angle for right now. This is going to be barely getting us anywhere, right? Ooh, okay, this thing is not particularly stable. I want to hold it right about here. There we go. This will do for now. Let's just lock it to prograde, to be honest. That'll be fine. So locking it to prograde there, we're watching that apoapsis. It is holding. It is going up. Okay, that's a good sign. That is absolutely a very, very good sign. I want that apoapsis to be ideally up in space by the time we are through this burn cycle, but I'm afraid that this particular stage might be a little bit underpowered to get us there. We'll see how that goes. That'll be very interesting. We don't appear to have a passive energy drain, I don't think. So I don't think we're going to require. D does this have a t an alternator on it in this game? Zero per second, but is that current? That's probably current. The fact that it even lists an alternator on there, I think means that it does have an alternator. So that looks reasonably good. We're about to burn out our weak stage here. I kind of want more altitude than this. We just shifted over into orbital mode. We've got about 600 meters per second left. That's gonna get us almost to orbital velocity, actually. So that looks reasonably good. This stage is definitely underpowered though, and this is not the way that I would want to do this in the future. Okay, so we see our apoapsis is about 60 kilometers right now. We've got a little bit more distance to go here. I'm going to angle for about 80 kilometers here. Just barely getting us up into space there. Okay. So we're going to burn a little bit further here, burning to about 80 kilometers, as I said. 78, 79, and 80. That'll do. Engine shut down, and we are going to, at this apoapsis, create a maneuver. And that is going to be circularization. So it'll be something along the lines of this or so. So that'll be a periapsis of 75 versus 85. So I guess that means that the timing was a little bit off there. 75 versus 85 still. Okay, so yeah, definitely a little off on it, but it doesn't really matter. This is close enough. We'll lock to that node, and that burn time is going to be starting in about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So we're definitely going to be in space by then, working on maximal maximal efficiency. So that looks good. We should have more than enough delta V to do what we need to do here. In theory. I mean, we've got two kilometers per second here. We're going to need about 300 to get into orbit, somewhere around 800 to transfer out to the moon, somewhere around another 600, maybe less actually, because we're not going to circularize. We just need to enter a minimal orbit of the moon, and then like 300-ish for our return trip. That should be okay. We should have more than enough there, even if we were going to circularize. It'd be a bit of a butt clencher, I think, but we're in space right now. Let's warp on forward here. Yeah, we're not seeing any passive drain on our electric charge, so that looks very good. So we'll start this burn in about 25 seconds. And I'm not planning, obviously, on doing any sort of a lander with this particular craft, because I don't know the structure of how the missions end up going. So, 
zero, and we are getting ourselves into orbit here. Yeah, we were slightly past the apoapsis there. That looks okay. So we're just going to get this all dealt with, with our vacuum-optimized engine. Much, much simpler at this point. No doubt about that. Cool. We are achieving orbital velocity as of now. And we're in orbital mode now. This is good enough. So we're going to get rid of that maneuver. Okay. So we are now in orbit around Kerbin. So we want to set the moon as our target, which we'll do like that. I want to see what the descending node is. 1.7. Okay, we could definitely make an inclination change, but I don't think it's necessary here. Moon is currently there. So somewhere around here or so is when we would need to do this. But we don't need to be at an even inclination. We just need to get ourselves an encounter with the moon. And it doesn't even need to be this significant of an encounter. So somewhere around here, right? Something like that. Let's actually hop over to mission control really quick and double check what we need to be at. Apoapsis less than 2400 and a periapsis greater than 60. So that is basically just be in orbit. Cool. So that looks good. Let's head back to the tracking station in order to hop into test vehicle one. There we go. And this encounter should be sufficient. So this periapsis around the moon is 1300 kilometers. That's fine. So that's okay, 846 meters per second to do that. And then beyond that, I'm wondering if we were to enter a minimal orbit here, I think we would need to head over to here. Apparently we cannot create a maneuver out ahead. Noted. I mean, that creates problems in KSP-1, so it's probably not the best thing in the world to do anyway. I just wanted to check how much DV it was going to cost us to, to do a minimal circularization there, or not even circularization, a minimal orbit. I'm also wondering right now, what our positioning... Mm, okay, so yeah, that's a little bit problematic on the timing, I feel like. So I want to change the timing a little bit on this. Or maybe even toss in a little bit more DV on it. Well, let me grab the timing, please. Okay. Just wondering about this here. Yeah, that's not really doing anything for us. So I'm going to get rid of this. I, I, I don't think there's a graphical maneuver editor in this game, is there? I don't think so. So I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want to have that radial in there. I just wanted to see what that would end up doing. So it's going to be something kind of like this, right? That is bad timing. Yeah, we're going to have to change the timing on this for sure. That is way too slingshot and we don't actually want a slingshot here. So let's just bring that guy on back to be more like this. A higher orbit is better. Honestly, that's a very brief time that we're in the sphere of influence. That might be too brief, but that would be pretty good. I think, it's, I think it probably is too brief. So let's just have it be something kind of like this. Relatively high orbit. We can circularize there without any major issues. So that's about six minutes away. Let's get oriented for that. We can see we're currently at 47 electric charge, but our alternator will recharge us. So that sounds great. And we're going to warp forward and head out to the moon here. So that's going to be in about 30 seconds. We can warp forward a little bit further. Okay, three, two, one, mark. So it's going to be about a minute and 10 seconds of burn time here, 862 meters per second to get ourselves out there. But because this is such a high orbit, that's going to change a little bit our circularization and return calculations. So that's not going to be about 900 meters per second. It's going to be a lower amount, I believe. So this should be fine in terms of DV. Even if it isn't, Jeb can get out and push on the way home. It's absolutely okay. We're very limited in what tech we have at this point. However, I'm wondering, can we run the environment samples here? 
this is apparently here. So we would need to run the environment survey. Can we rerun it, though? Experiment for that region already in storage. Okay. Noted. So if this is a rerunner, rerunnable experiment, that would be convenient for us. No doubt about that. We'll see if that is indeed convenient. Okay. About five seconds left in this burn. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. What did we do? Let's get rid of this. That looks about correct. Excellent. So we're going to need to head up to the moon. So we want to warp to the encounter, which I guess we would have it be here at the moon periapsis. This will need to be a then retrograde burn. So that would need to go this direction. Although it's going to be from here, it would appear to be prograde. That makes things a little awkward. Okay, this is not correctly calculating it. Noted. So we're going to need to warp to here. So off we go. And I believe, are we there yet now? I mean, that's Kerbin there. Where is the moon even? Hi, moon. Okay, so that is moon. And I want to warp to here. Beyond this encounter. Okay, so we're now here. And we're going to grab at the moon periapsis... We're going to create a maneuver plan with the idea being a retrograde burn from this sphere of influence. Okay, that's going to be 363, but it's not actually going to be quite like that. We can absolutely circularize this, and that would be somewhere around right there. Cool. So that is going to be 1652 kilometers to 1624. That is absolutely good enough. We'll align it to that node. So the moon is, of course, not there. The moon is down here at this point. And we're going to warp forward. That is going to be in about an hour that we start this burn. So let's position for that. We've got 844 meters per second left, which is more than enough for what we're going to do here. Excellent. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. And 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. Let's get ourselves into orbit here. And this is more orbit than we need, to be clear. All we need to be in is an orbit. But we're going to circularize it because that will make returning easier. And that's absolutely wonderful. We need to remember we are in a prograde orbit here. Okay, so just doing something like that. That'll do. And we can return to mission control to submit that brief. Now, I want to make sure that we have our sample from high orbit moon. Apparently we do. That appears to be automatically going. So that looks good. And we, of course, need to recover all of this. We've got the environment data here. We don't have the electric charge to actually transmit this. And we'd probably rather recover it anyway. So that seems absolutely fine. Let's head on over to the mission control and see what this next mission is. So we'll submit this. That's going to get us 150 science. Beautiful. We're leading the space race. Ours is the only agency participating. Yes, this is all very, very accurate. Excellent. So there's 150 science there. Now we can do the perfect circle. Establish an orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis and periapsis each between... Okay, so it wants a 100 kilometer orbit. And then... First dibs, plant a flag within any mare on the moon. So that's one of the smooth, dark lowlands. And then here is land on the surface of the moon. So these two happen simultaneously. Which would be worth 400 science. And this would be worth 100 science. Okay, so all we need to do then is return home. I'm not going to establish a Kerbin, or a Kerbin orbit with this craft. Yeah, that's not going to happen with this craft because of the amount of Delta V that we have left. So let's just hop over and we should fly this guy and bring Jebediah right on home. So that'll be perfect. And where is, there's Kerbin. So the moon will be down here. That's fine. We are, of course, quite high up in this orbit. And with us being in a prograde orbit, right around here, we would want to burn prograde to return ourselves home. Maybe that's different in this game. Oh, 
Apparently it's different in this game. Okay, so the orbital dynamics might be slightly different there. About here? Yep, that calculation is slightly different, but this is acceptable. We can definitely get this return trajectory from here. So this burn is going to be in about 15 minutes. I want to pin open this because we're going to need to know exactly how low this ends up being. We're just angling for about 20 kilometers. That's no fuel at that point. Okay, so this is definitely a lot more expensive to return with this trip in KSP2. That is noted. 82 kilometers is not an acceptable return. Uh, yeah, I know there's no fuel. Let's just back off on this a little bit. I wanted to change the timing on it. Okay, yeah, this is, this is absolutely fine. So that's 56 kilometers there. That's an impact trajectory. What's this? 25? That'll do. So that is starting this burn in about nine minutes. That'll burn off basically all of our remaining fuel. So the burn is definitely slightly different than it was in KSP-1. In KSP-1, the burn time would have been about here. And it would have been about 300 meters per second to return. So that is definitely something that we'll have to factor in. Let's align to the maneuver node, which we basically already are, I think. Oh, we're just not, not running. That would help. Okay, so let's just head on over to this. That's definitely a small change, but I mean, 500 meters per second isn't that much different from 300, and it's just slightly different timing. So that's okay. We'll just position for this and return right on home. So 30 seconds, 20, 10, and we should be burning. Fantastic. Uh, what is this doing at this point? The maneuver is very confused. But I believe this is correct. We're burning correctly here. I'm not sure what's up with the maneuver, why it's doing this number, but whatever. We're getting the correct result, and that's what truly matters here. So that looks good. Let's just get rid of the maneuver for right now. And I want to pin open this periapsis, and we'll bring that down to about 20 kilometers. Okay, that's two kilometers. We have no delta V remaining. Let's flip around to retrograde at this time. We'll burn off any remaining fuel that we have. I don't think we have any. But if there's any, we'll go back this way a little bit. Okay. No, this should be fine. In theory, that should be completely and totally okay. So at this point, what we want to do is get rid of this. And that will burn up in the atmosphere. That's okay. Or not. It'll be space junk, maybe. But that'll be fine. And at this point, we need to warp to about here. Because I'm not sure where exactly in this orbit we will be when we exit here. Okay, we're going up. Sounds good. So we're going to want to warp to about here then. Four days, one hour. Yes. Yes. So we'll warp to about here. I may have manually warped that instead of hitting the map button. We'll time warp to point here, and we're just falling down towards Kerbin. Hi, Kerbin. And we are going to arrow break our way on through. It should be okay at two kilometers. I don't think there's going to be a major issue here. So down we go. We're going to be hitting the atmosphere. There we go. Atmosphere has been hit. And we're falling on down. Our speed is currently going up. Our orbital speed is. Our surface speed is dropping. It's not dropping very fast. We're 40 kilometers up right now. There's definitely still quite a lot of air between us and the ground, though. And we're currently cruising at 2.9 kilometers per second. It's now slowing down pretty significantly. We're going to start entering some pretty thick portions of atmosphere here. I don't think we'll have an issue. Aero braking should not be a problem here. Apparently, we have some potential research here. I don't think that we need to run this survey, though. Experiment for that region already in storage. Yes. This appears to be automatically running the science, so that's fine. And now we're down to just a kilometer per second here. We're not going to have any issues here. We are going to come down on land, but that should be fine. 
900 meters per second. 800. I'm going to try deploying the chute via the space bar here. And apparently it worked this time. Okay, cool. So that's fine. And the chute will slow us down a little bit, but it won't be until we hit radar altitude of a kilometer that we'll be in a much better position. So ground altitude of seven kilometers right now, moving at 200 meters per second, no problem here. At this point, in theory, we are perfectly safe. So yeah, definitely no problem with that arrow break. Arrow breaking is really strong in this game. That return might have been a problem in KSP-1. Maybe. This craft isn't very heavy, but it's a theoretical possibility that it would have been a problem. So we're still coming down. It feels pretty quick, but the chute is deploying now. There we go. And we're slowing down nicely. Down to 10 meters per second. Nine. Okay, let's physics warp this forward a bit. Nine meters per second is maybe a little bit spicy. We'll see how much ends up recovering here. Okay. So. That's interesting. We ended up losing the Science Junior there. We clearly need additional external parachutes. And we still have our data, though. I'm pretty sure here. So with us still having our data and this heat shield was detached, that's fine. It's interesting that we're not sliding. I like that. So let's just go ahead and recover this vessel. And we'll confirm that recovery. There we go. We'll close that. And I want to get this guy. And I want to recover this as well. We'll confirm that. And then we'll head back to the KSC. So we should have quite a lot of science at this point. 445. That is indeed a lot of science. So what do we want to do with that level of science? Well, mission number one, in my opinion, would be medium orbital rockets into fuel lines. But that would be very expensive. That would be too expensive. We wouldn't be able to afford that. We can finish off a lot of these light rocket research. And that's maybe not the worst idea. Power launchers would give us access to the skipper and 2.5 meter stuff. We could definitely grab that. Tier 2 has now been unlocked. And that gives us access to the medium orbital rockets. But I don't want to get that done just yet. We should probably grab some additional parachutes. Okay, extendable landing legs from the LT-5. This is the LT-1. So bigger landing legs is not a bad idea. Okay, that seems fine. Basic trusses would be okay. Separatrons, radial decouplers. Yeah, those are all fine. We can just work our way through a lot of this, to be honest. Rechargeable batteries would be pretty decent to have. RCS, if we want to do any docking. Monoprop drives, I mean, they're okay. We should probably have access to some form of antenna. That would be a useful thing to have. Docking ports, and that'll be good for now. We'll get the rest of these cleaned up after our next mission. So that'll be okay. It is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to create our lander for landing on the moon. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.